Stefani Willis took the stand in her misconduct trial yesterday, and let's just say it raised some eyebrows. Roll tape. Well, it's highly offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they try to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. Do you think I'm on trial? These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Okay, meanwhile, her former assistant confirmed Willis's personal relationship with the prosecutor. Watch this. And when I say personal, romantic. Is that, is, I just want to make sure we don't get in an argument over what personal and romantic is later. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Okay. And do you understand it? that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. Okay. Kaylee McGee-White joins me now. All right, Kaylee, does it look like Fani Willis will be removed from the case? It certainly looks so, but a lot of this depends on how the judge interprets the evidence that's been presented thus far. Both Willis and Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor that she appointed to oversee the Donald Trump case, proved yesterday that they have made false statements before the court, him and his divorce proceedings, and her in the filings in Donald Trump's own case, that they were in an improper relationship with each other when she appointed him as special prosecutor. But I got to say, yesterday's hearing was quite amazing in that Fannie Willis was able to get away with things that normal witnesses would never be able to get away with. And that includes Donald Trump. Trump has been sanctioned. He's been um, hit with threats of contempt of court. He's been placed under gag orders for going outside of the con confines of the questions that have been asked of him. And yet, Judge McAfee allowed Fannie Willis to go on really long rambles um, and undermined the counsel's questions towards her. And I think that that's a sign that perhaps he's not as willing to take as seriously the charges that are being leveled against her. Kelly, I've got more for you in just a moment, but stand by. I want to move to a, a separate issue here. Special counsel Robert Hur will testify on his investigation into President Biden's handling of classified documents. Details on this, please, Taylor. Yes. Yeah, so, of course, we know that he's going to be testifying publicly on the Biden investigation. And this hearing, Stu, really comes as Republicans have called this a failure to recommend charges for Biden. Part of the broader problem of this, quote, double standard and this sort of two-tiered justice system that Republicans see, given, of course, that President Trump's prosecution came on espionage Espionage Act charges. So the House Speaker, uh, Mike Johnson, of course, arguing that this case really exposes that two-tier justice system. They think it's politically motivated, and they really want to actually get his thoughts, too, on um, Biden's sort of memory loss and what's going on there. Okay, we'll get more details on that. Uh, K uh, Taylor, will you come back? Sorry. Kaylee, will you come back on this one, please? I I I'm saying that this hearing is so dramatic and so important that it could actually sink Biden's campaign. What say you? Yeah, well, it's politically bad news for Biden, and it's also legally bad news right. for Biden. Remember, the only reason that the questions of his memory came up were as an excuse for the Justice Department to not prosecute Biden for a crime that he did commit and a crime that they're currently prosecuting his top political rival for. So how do you square the fact that the Justice Department is still prosecuting Trump for mishandling classified information, and yet they're not choosing to prosecute Biden for doing the same thing? Honestly, the memory excuse is just not going to hold up legally. And of course, when Robert Hur is put on the stand and asked questions about the specifics of memory la lapses by the president, that's going to be politically harmful for Biden's campaign. I think it could be a disaster. Uh, Kelly McGee-White, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. See you soon.